It feels like the first time. It feels like the very first time. It feels like the first time. It feels like the very first time. Look at Jordan tell the sun shone bright on me. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to It Feels Like the First Time show. God has spared our podcast, Steve. Wow. God has spared our podcast. We are the three. <laughs> God bless this podcast. Guys, Brett is coming to us from the East Coast. Again for the first time. Again for the first yeah. time. Again for um, the first time. I appreciate time. your uh, dedication to the show, Brett. You've you've proven yourself to be a moist towelette. Dedicated. Yeah, I didn't know I had. I didn't know I had any option. I mean, you could have been like, "Hey, is it cool if I take like a week off?" And then I'd be like, "No, you can't do that." Guys, welcome to the first time show. We're watching The Leftovers, and we're deep into season two. We just finished episodes. Season two. Season two. Season two. Season dude. Is it too early to get into? I don't like this season as much as the first season. <gasps> wow. Hot early? takes. Hot. I would. I would wait just a little because we're only halfway. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right, is it too hot? But I don't have a strong memory. No, no. I don't want to start the wedding. I, I think that's wedding put into the podcast. Here's the thing: season two is very different from season one. Season two is like taco seasoning. Season two is a little different from season one, and um, you know, I understand why like some a day people after would... you've had too many tacos. Yes. Exactly. It's the next day taco. But um, but we're. I I was just telling Alana not to not to put too much pressure. Oh shit! On I thought he wasn't going to say this, and that's why I jumped in with my my weight on season two take. Well, I have to say this because I think it needs to be said. Go for it, Barbie and Ken. I'm edge of my fucking seat. But the next two episodes that we do for next week. The second episode of that batch is my favorite episode of the entire series. Dun, dun, dun. Is, it, is Owen coming off for, coming on? Well, for it? I actually texted Owen the name of the episode, and I said it's coming up next week. And what did he say? I haven't gotten anything back from him. Oh, because he's smoking. He's yeah. just out smoking. Well, when he's smoking, yeah, he usually has his phone smoking. on him, so he must he must be sleeping. What an I hour know, to be sleeping. Believe. Um, anyway, but the thing is, is uh, yeah, we've got we had some interesting episodes. I guess we got our we got our Matt episode that was that kind of mirrored his uh, casino adventure episode. I thought we were going to go on a real paranormal activity ride for this episode. What? I thought she was going to like sit up and look at him. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? Oh, oh, on the on the camera where he was watching her. <laughs> is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. It would yeah. be terrifying. Yeah, yeah. There was a point at which me and Jamie got into a pretty heated back and forth as to whether or not I was pulling the covers off of her in the <gasps> middle of the night or if she was kicking the covers off onto me. Uh -oh. And I suggested we put a GoPro in the room and film the evening, and neither of us was comfortable doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather not know. What other stuff are you doing in the night in the bed? I'll we're, stop there. I, apparently, we're in a a life or death struggle for the covers. Wow! Uh, no, what's happening is Jamie pushes, pushes the covers across me, um, and then blames me. All right. Well, this episode is titled "No Room at the Inn," which is a direct reference to the Jesus story. Oh, the title. Can I tell bit. you my take on episode five? Because it's quick and easy. Go for it. I hate it. That's all. Ma okay. It made me yeah, feel Alana like shit. Didn't like I didn't it. enjoy any part of it. Matt's character is Dive like, right he's right canceled as far six. as I'm concerned. I'm overhearing his. Ugh. It just reminds me everything that I am. I don't like about 
our culture, like struggle, everything should suck, the world hates you and everything's the worst, always have faith in something that won't come true and don't have actual faith that everything sucks. So I don't like it. Okay, that's I think I'm it, done. I think it I think we got my favorite clip of the series from this episode. Oh really? really? I can't that wait. Would be, that would be the one positive. But I agree with you. I was kinda like, oh, we're I don't I didn't need another Matt episode. Not if it's like that. I was all set. Well, you yeah. guys have to you guys have to understand that like we're basically binging. Steve, we don't have to do shit. We're <laughs> we're basically <laughs> binging this show. And when oh, you yeah, saw no, sure. when you for saw sure. it in real time, you were like, "I'm waiting for the Matt episode. I want to know how the fuck he got to Jarden. I want to know what the hell was up with Mary apparently waking up, if that even actually happened. And uh, you know, when you're when you haven't seen the the Matt episode of season one for over a year, it makes it less like we just saw a Matt episode that was very similar." Um, so, but I can totally understand that it's like, it's basically like a torture porn episode. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, And, uh, but they really, 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 really want to hammer it home to the audience that (laughs) Matt is suffering quite a bit. God. And I feel like Lindelof wouldn't overtly do that for, without a reason. reason. I hope to the Lord. Yeah, so I'm I I don't remember a lot of things about Matt's storyline. Really, after all these episodes about him, deeply, intensely, well, emotionally, I remembered <laughs> the stuff with Mary and the magic that happened to her, conceivably in Jarden. Yeah, um, I remembered that too. From but I didn't time. remember really any of the details of this episode. I I did not know that he was like trying to replicate that day, like perfectly. To yeah. see if there was like a magic recipe that made her awaken. Um uh but yeah, I didn't remember any of that. I didn't remember that he he was basically being accused of like raping his wife by several people in the episode. <laughs> and uh I didn't remember that. But uh it's quite Yeah, that was that was a real weird uh pivot for the show to take. I mean, it's like it's the first time you're seeing like real world consequences to and like something rules. in the show. I feel because there wasn't really any, there wasn't a real world. Um, uh, there wasn't MTV's the real world. <laughs> there, there wasn't, wasn't a, a real world there, road rules challenge this what year. What if there's a real world season going on and half the cast just disappeared? <laughs> wow. Yeah. What if? But um. Not if it's real world Jarden. <laughs> but uh but yeah, this episode was was certainly quite a bit for people that um don't want to watch a guy get beaten the shit out of. Yeah. But it was interesting getting to go into that like shanty town mm-hmm. that's outside of Jarden and see specifically what's going on down there. And it seems like it's a progress a a a, a version of a post apocalypse a post-apocalyptic Ren Fair. Yeah, yeah. A post-apocalyptic Burning Man, or just Burning Man. Burning Man, Ren Fair, post-apocalyptic. Those three. I don't think. I don't think. I think that's just Burning Man. No, no, no. Because it's not just the Burning Man people. It's people who are the opposite of that. Also. It was that like that fire festival. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shots fired. Um, <laughs> Shots fired I, uh, festival. I, the thing about this episode is there's it's it's got lost syndrome again where there's so many interesting mysteries and this isn't one of them and we just spent a whole episode on it. Which which like, mystery? Not, I don't really care. I, I don't want to say I, want, I don't care, but I'm not as concerned as to whether or not his wife woke up and what the implications of that are as I am in all of the Kevin and Nora and their neighbors stuff. Yeah, so same. Even though it's like directly related to the potential magic of Jarden, like the idea that Mary actually woke up because of the fact that they're in like Jardin. this this touched by God, chosen, if you will, chosen, chosen by God mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, I hate that he had sex with her. 
Like, Me isn't too. it better if he's like, I didn't have sex with her. She can't be pregnant, but then she is pregnant because she's Mary. And then we can think that she's carrying, oh, you know, shit. That's, the Christ child. I feel like that's too on the nose, <laughs> but I don't think that's too on the nose for this, for this show. show. Yeah, maybe. But, well, they didn't do it. Maybe, but, um, yeah, it's an interesting storyline. That's, I mean, the, the whole thing with like, did he rape his wife and stuff? I don't know if that's like a, thing that will come back or if it will i mean it seems like this I mean, pregnancy thing whole episode will... with like the litigation <laughs> the back and forth yeah. with his lawyer you know yeah 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 i want to see it attorney too. the prosecution get a whole sub story i'm also dying to see that but i i don't <laughs> think we'll see it I feel like this episode, if I was questioning whether or not I care about Matt's story before, this episode made me think, oh, I hate him now, so I don't care. I really don't care. I, I don't hate him like Alana does. Well, I don't know if I, I hate him is like, the right I'm word. I'm not but... Alana, no empathy, but <laughs> I don't <care laughs> <for his> storyline. <laughs> I think I so don't care about him that boredom starts creeping in when I watch him now because they just made him make such choices that were so stupid and inconsistent to a real human's choices to me Is, that now I'm like, I would rather just go watch the birds outside than watch the rest of this episode. I, still I was think, squirming. Ask Steve. But I still think all of this behavior tracks in a world where like a bunch of people disappeared. Sure, but it's not. It doesn't track with me. I'm right. like I'm bored of it. Well, it's a fucking for him. It's for a make believe show. For he's fuck's still sake, doing shit stuff. Um, is is I feel like we're personally attacking Steve at this point? Is I'm a, sorry. I have a real strong opinion after that episode. I hated it. Is Alana the new Owen? A little bit. I, I mean, she's she's it's like a filling she's, replacement. Yeah, she's filling Owen's mm -hmm. spot like organically very well. You know, Owen and I have a lot of of similar opinions about film stuff, and I think part of it is because we went to the same film school, but not because we went to specifically, they taught us the same, but because this, a certain type of person went to that film school. If that makes sense. I'm just During surprised. The ad to... rates, can you go outside? And... <laughs> <laughs> Except I'm um, the exact opposite. I'll go outside and like drink green juice. <laughs> mm -mm. Did you guys see the loved one doll in that like guy's little trailer? And he was reading a what's next. Oh, book. yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think that was a... I didn't realize that was a loved one. I thought it was just, like, a sex blow-up doll. No, that was, like, his oh, person that yeah. departed. yeah. I was trying to remember what a loved one doll is, and yeah, that's what that was. I thought it was, like, Lars and the Real Girl. Yeah, me too. I mean, they were pretty despicable humans there, so I would assume, I would see why. I mean, not to say that only despicable humans would have a love doll, but... I I can understand why you would feel that way. But if way. the shoe fits. But I mean, if things are already kind of gross down there. Um, Ew. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's see. Any other information here that's kind of interesting? Several why of the songs. Why do you think that guy wanted him to call him Brian when he smacked him on the yeah, back? Yeah, that's a great <laughs> question. Why do you think, Brett? Who's that guy in the Down Under? What's, I don't know. Uh, Australia? Is his name Brian? There was a B in his name, or his mm. last name is Burton. Yeah, his oh, last name's Burton. Burton. Yeah. That was a great sequence where she like uh, tested him on his biblical knowledge. Yeah, I loved that. That was very cool. I liked seeing... I don't know what any of it meant, but I liked it. <laughs> I liked seeing that zone, though, that like area. I felt like it was very cool, like yeah. world developing over there. Yeah, Agreed. I liked when he tried to sneak back into Miracle... And they were in the sewer, and it reminded me of the first It movie. And then I thought I would like to rewatch the first It movie. Yeah, it reminded and me that of ER. Made me excited. It reminded a of lot what? of ER. It for reminded some me of ER, and I said I can't watch people go into sewers while it's raining after ER. <laughs> the show. Is there a traumatic ER? ER? Is that how? Yes. Yeah. Save it for the ER season coming up. There is a very traumatic ER episode. Maybe one of the most. One of the, not the one necessarily, but one of the most famous during the peak uh, fame of ER, George Clooney and all. Is that where JR dies? <laughs> Did we tell everybody we're doing ER next? <laughs> I thought I we were doing it. We... I would actually love it. I thought we were doing Dallas we... next. No, we announced ER, but we might have announced it on an episode, on a previous episode of Talking Banter. <laughs> I, I thought remember. we were going to do Fraggle Rock. All right, 
Let's move on. No I wanted the to end. do Land of the Lost. We got some good stuff got from... Land uh, Before Time. All right. Children, <laughs> please. Simmer down. Uh, no Room at the Inn uh, was a great episode and divisive, I guess. But well, well, I, feel like I, I feel like more will come up when we, when we get to the emails, which I'm excited about. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. All right. Next episode was called Lens. Oh, by the way, No Room at the Inn was directed by... Was it Mimi Leader? Me. This is the first yes, two I... that I didn't pay attention to. Who directed she she directed one of these two, but uh, I don't know if it was both. Come on, you dumb shit. Come on, Mimi. Come on, Mimi. Me. Come, come on, Mimi. 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 Come on, yeah i don't know it's like i i can't find it the next episode is called lens <laughs> okay Mimi. I'll, okay. I'll tell you okay brat will find out anyway um i took one can i tell you i took one note in my little notes on this episode one well, note here. the one note is demon Azrael. <laughs> damn right are you ready this episode was directed by nicole castle oh meaning no room at the end and no room at the end and Lynn's was directed by craig zobel oh i thought it was oh ah, zobely zoo <laughs> <clears throat> Lens. <laughs> Lens um, was a really cool episode. Brett? I loved it. This was such a breath of fresh air after No Room at the End. True. 100. It's, yeah, it was back it, to it was it back felt to like form. so many things. It had like a Watchmen moment at the end when she threw the rock through the window. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was very Angela Abar. Yes, and I loved it. Yeah. Um, but overall, <laughs> I left it confused about a lot of things. Yeah. Well, how about like, I mean, <laughs> it's hard to, to, uh, remember where we started in the episode, but some of the things that I can remember that kind of like uh, stand out to me are, it had a very lost, not to keep bringing it back to lost, but it had a very lost feeling right from the beginning actually because oh actually did it yeah because now that i think about it it had that guy that uh that i feel like was in doctor sleep was he that guy with the hat that You're was talking with about the, the guy guys? who was getting water and then angela abar is doing his arm no no i'm talking about the scientist oh. guy the scientist the man that the made the pie. Hair. Oh, oh, right, oh, right. oh, you mean Desmond? At the yeah, Desmond. <laughs> these are all different people. All yes. of these are um, different. I'm talking about Desmond. So here's the deal. <laughs> this is the episode where Leftovers separated itself from Lost. And I realized because Lost is built, like we talked about last week, Lost is built on that precipice of something uh, otherworldly is happening. From the beginning. Yeah. Right. So you start to just believe when something otherworldly happens. I guess leftovers is kind of too because people disappeared, but every one of these little things, like that guy testing her, the woman on the phone talking about Azrael, um, <laughs> uh, her putting the bird in the ground and saying the bird flew away, and then her daughter just like, I don't know what to believe. I know. And it's... That, that's what separates it from Lost. Lost, I'm just like, okay, if you give me information, I believe it. Exactly. And, and Leftovers, I'm kind of always on guard. 100%. And that's the difference between my enjoyment of Lost versus this show. It's just different. I'm not saying I don't like this show, but I really liked Lost because I was down. I was like on the ride. And that's why this one, it's harder to just be sitting on the ride because you're like, you're asking me to question things. So it's natural. I want to question them. Oh, I mean, Leftovers in is fantastic. It's a fantastic show, but it's not as good as Lost, Alana. You got to take that ride. This is my feeling. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I watch most She's of take Lost. The ride. I, I watch. We're like, gonna watch Lost. Like yeah. what? Four or five seasons or something. I watched a lot. I just then I broke up with the guy who had the DVD set, so I couldn't finish it. <laughs> Obviously, um, it's a crying shame, but <laughs> we'll get to it sometime. Uh, but I did like that. Um, 
we're we're kind of like uh, we're getting some scientist stuff. Yes, and and, uh, and like. You know, I didn't think we were going to get any of this in the show because it seems very external from the yeah. main storyline. But I and I liked how it was in the first season. It was kept at a distance, but they still kind of teased you with like, you know, the, remember in season one, there was MIT like a, guys? there was like a well, yeah, those guys, too. But in I think that's season two, though, wasn't it? The MIT guys. Yeah, they came. Wait, to visit what? No, that was back at the old place. So no, it must yeah, have but been... it was a flashback in season oh. two. Oh, but was but it? in season one there was a moment there was it was like right like it might have even been the first episode or two or something. It was but the second episode. There was where a, she sold her house. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the first season now. I'm talking like um, there was a moment that I really liked about season one, among mm. very many others that are kind of along the lines of this. But there was a TV on in the background, and there was like a what seemed like kind of like a Supreme Court press conference or something and the the like guy who was like leading it was like you know what what do you think happened or whatever and the scientist was just like i think like god sat this one out or something remember like it was oh yeah that was was an interesting it was like the only like little tease of like science versus what the state or what like politics and science are, are, are doing about the departure. Mm. And it was interesting that we got to see it in these like little broken moments that were just alongside the storyline. But now it seems like they're just like full on busting it into the story, which I'm trying to make more sense in this show than in lost. Because right. lost, you know, it's a plane crash. They probably would have got over it and moved on. And this one, it's like people would study this forever. Yeah, it's like my question to Mike of like, what would you do if I shot up into into space? Can you know? Can you tell me where that question comes from? <laughs> well, I just thought of it one day. I was like, I just asked Mike straight up, what would you do if I if we were just walking along? And I, I, uh, <laughs> I turned to you and said, my work here is done. And then I looked up into the sky and shot up into space. And then he never saw me again. And Mike said that he would, if he would just go get some lunch and then go home. And I was like, I don't think that's true. And I was Bullshit. like, I yeah, and my not. thing was like, my life would change from yeah. that moment on. I would never be the same. We, and I would make it have, my yeah. life's work to find out what the fuck happened mm. and i would we be obsessed to have with a it. carefully constructed <laughs> idea of of what uh can and cannot happen <laughs> right. and, you know what i mean and the and second if anything you, like, happens break... that's outside of that and we witness it <laughs> yeah. it it breaks the whole yeah, fabric yeah. of our understanding of this earth yeah and now anything's possible right and i think they i think uh <laughs> They're they're kind of doing that. Uh, well, they're definitely doing that in leftovers. But now we're getting like a taste mm-hmm. of the scientific community making its way into this show and perhaps being, um, you know, a part of the storyline. And is they've really contacted cool. the Vatican. So yeah, well, that's really funny too. Is that? But do yeah, you think, well, do you think that? <laughs> do you think that that call is? Well, fuck. Yeah, well. I mean, here's the thing about that call. <laughs> it's abs- us, it's absolutely bonkers, but it was like a scientist. It's bonkers, but. It was a scientist. Let me tell you this. I had a very specific thought <laughs> after that scene. Uh-huh. And it was, oh, they're not going to, at no point in this show are we going to find out why they disappeared. Yeah. That's what that moment also. I had like a, a glass shatter moment where I was like, "Oh, it's not about what happened. Jack it's about on. you know grief and dealing with grief." And, yeah. And that moment, I was like, "They're not going to tell us. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to get a bunch of theories, and none of and all of them are going to be wacky. We're just going to have to make our. But here's with the that. thing, though. Like, <laughs> it's it. I I can't help but but like really love that phone call and 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 like to a degree where like she said that they were that that it was a divisive thought about where about um the lens theory and Mm -hmm. uh and she was like why me and they were like well we're kind of at an impasse here at the lab about why certain people are chosen 
and a scientist tells her that it's a demon. <laughs> That's it's because a... science changed when people disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're probably science right. Science changed. Now it's like, well, yeah, nothing's off the table. Else. We should explore <laughs> yeah. a little bit further. It's like, it's not surprising to me at all because I think people would be exploring all options. So there yeah. would definitely be science arenas that are exploring <laughs> old, like, religious texts in combination with what scientifically happened. <laughs> I guess sure. you're right because they, you're right. They would, they, it would, I mean, it would turn everything upside down pretty much. But you're right. The scientific community would probably be like, all right, well, time to go back to the drawing board about, like, everything and see where we can discover even a hint of anything like this yeah. ever happening in history ever. And, and like the, the and maybe there was some like demon shit in some ancient texts or something sure. that they would take you and you'd go somewhere and no one would find you again or something. You yeah, know? and the Swedish guy, remember after when they were like walking away or something? The guy he, at Burning Man. Yeah, the Swedish guy at Burning Man. He started, I think Swedish. He started saying something that was like related to Zeus. It was some like Greek mythology phrase that he was saying to them as they walked away so it was like quiet in the background oh, yeah. remember you and i were like what yeah. is that greek there's no mention of that in the... that was last episode yeah right? that was but last episode it's interesting that like yeah. we have all these different people because i what i think is interesting about the, the the fact that that call was relating to like christianity history mm -hmm. like i think we've been getting little tips of things looking into like the greek god concepts history the this like all the different like religious histories or different types of uh religions historically that uh it seems like everybody's kind of digging into those as well because maybe there was truth to the old roman stuff or maybe there maybe there was truth to the aztec this and that or whatever you know so it's interesting mm -hmm. that theirs was christian specifically but i guess the whole show is themed on christianity so that would make sense yeah but dude just to dive into this episode we learned yeah. a lot of things we got a lot of answers yes, we, we did, did get a lot of answers and then we got a lot of new little secrets too but, but we so know about the bird we know, we about, know about the about bird the man who knows things mm -hmm. we know about the pie yeah we know about the man who kills goats yeah <laughs> wait what's his name we gotta remember his name jerry i think jerry i think it is yeah jerry, jerry. it's jerry no jerry not now <laughs> not now jerry not now not jerry here. It's not gonna happen here, Jerry. No, Jerry. Oh, no. Let him, hey, let him do it. Come no, on. Jerry. Hey, not now. Hey, Jerry not alone. here. Let, let, let not Jerry here. <laughs> yeah. He's great. Now yeah. we, we learned why people don't stop episode. him when he goes to cut his goats. Yeah, we we learned why people are okay with it. I like that they're just they're just north of okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> and we learned about the <laughs> wedding dress. The diner, now. She's like, oh, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the wedding like, dress girl. There's the so many dress little girl. piglets we yeah. learned about. Because that was one where, like, oh, it yeah. was like Erie, Indiana. She was like mowing the lawn in her wedding dress in the mm -hmm. first episode. Corpse bride. And you're like, what the fuck is this wacky shit? But then you learn it's just the townspeople are so obsessed with the fact that they didn't depart, that nobody departed there, that they're just like bonkers about keeping things like in a loop of how they were protected in some way. Well, I think it's interesting and it says something about the filmmakers that in both of these episodes, we have characters suggesting that in their minds, when a really great outcome happened, they want to repeat exactly what they did in hopes that it'll repeat the outcome. And that's not like, that's not an instinct of mine. If something, I mean, I guess the way I just phrased it sounds like, of course you'd want to do that, but you know, down to the detail of like, oh, I put my left foot here and my right foot here and I, ate a hot dog at this exact hour right, and then right. this hat like I th to me that wouldn't be an instinct to try to repeat because the way I think of it it's almost like the way health in your body works like you might have a perfectly healthy day when you ate x y and z but if you were to eat only x y and z every single day you would not continue to have a perfectly healthy day like you need a little bit other varieties so in my mm. mind it's like the not what I would instinctually try to do to repeat exactly what I had done but it, it seems like there are so many characters coming from so many different backgrounds and all of them are in on this to some degree. If they're trying to do something, they're trying to repeat what they did. But you can understand that people would like do that. Yeah, but what I think it's interesting is I think it says more about the filmmakers because it's not like 
one person or one sect of people or just the town does that. Matt does that too. Like so many people are yeah, doing that yeah. that I think it's not, it's, it's, ta- it's, it's more, it says more that it's coming from the brain of these specific filmmakers than, oh, everyone in, in the world who went through this experience would be doing that if they had some non, not a uh, departure or like luck. Does that make sense? Is that translating? I'm a little bit tired. So no, no, <laughs> it that's might great. be coming out that's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Guys, oh, all right. Some, <laughs> some, here's some trivia for lost fans. <gasps> Is this spoily? The woman who was on the phone with Nora was Penny from Lost. Oh. Pennywise but from it, Lost? But it, it was in her boat. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. That's that that is interesting. Yeah. All right, t- talk about the you got the bloopies pulled up. Talk a tell them. Uh Talk a tell them. Wait, what? I'm playing Mad Libs with myself today if you can't tell. I'm trying Talk-a-toa to see if there's from Moana. <laughs> I do it most days. Come on down. <laughs> Steve read the sh- Doobies. What con- the conversation between Nora and the fundraiser volunteer about PayPal mirrors the dialogue between Nora and Wayne's assistant in uh, Nora's assistant yeah. Ray and Guest. Yeah, did you get Steve that? Steve called that. I wondered if PayPal. <laughs> That's what, a lot That's of what I said. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I guess. Yeah. We'll- Is there any good trivia? No, that oh. was it. That was it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was I was I was skimming it. But that was it. Um yeah, um yeah, fuck it. Let's go to clips and then we'll go to emails and I'm sure it'll kick up some good stuff. So uh let's do some clips Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the clips? <laughs> Where is it? There it is. You got yourself a fish biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Kevin. Get me, please. Kevin! I say fuck! Ah! Ah! Wanna cheese? Wait, who is Who is the guy we kept thinking? Shit! We got a player here! Who is the guy we kept calling out a couple weeks ago? B- oh, Benji. oh, Beto? You're talking about no, Beto? Bobby. 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 Finally, Bobby. My goodness. All right. Bobby. Scott Bauer sends a clip. Just kidding. Let's do clips. I'm Bobby. <laughs> uh, what's this? Do you want to intro these or just play them? Just play them. Just play them. Okay, hang on. I hope I have the right one here. I hope. I want my copay back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want my copay back. <laughs> he does want his copay back. Back door, my friend. <gasps> yes! Yes! <laughs> back door, my friend. Back door, my friend. Back Sounds like door, a video like it. It's like a video game character. I like that one a lot. <laughs> back door, my friend. <laughs> Where do you prefer it? Back door, my friend. <laughs> got it. You zip tied him? The man got a busted hand. Works at the church. Would you scared he gonna baptize you or something? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Care is pregnant. Yes. Care is pregnant. I couldn't get it clean. That's what she said. For you. Was that, was that hard enough or do I need another or? <laughs> <laughs> Is that oh, your favorite right. clip? <laughs> Brett died. Is that hard enough or do I need another or? <laughs> Emily, you smell like alcohol. Oh, wait, that wasn't it. Was that hard enough or do I need another or? <laughs> That's, of course, when he broke the or on that When he screamed back. Brian. Brian! What the hell do you uh, think that was about? It was about throwing us off the track. I don't I know think if we'll just, ever know. You know what I think not it enough is? Episodes. Exactly. I think it's just every time we see like the general public, that you you can just assume that either they're in a weird cult or they're or they're like, 
you know, they've lost Everyone their mind. Everyone has cracked. Yeah, no, everyone's cracked. They've lost their mind. They they have they have led themselves to believe they need something weird and specific to be okay. <laughs> yeah, I think yes. you're right. Like Brian and If Hicks. they can get that, they can move on. All right, next clip. Emily, you smell like alcohol. <laughs> Alana wanted to get that one. I'm here for you, we Alana. That the demon Azrael has chosen you as his earthbound instrument. This entity resides in you through no fault of your own and is responsible for the chaos that surrounds you and possibly many others. <sighs> Dr. Corto and I have contacted the Vatican. <laughs> oh, shit. Let's hear that again. Dude, that's insane. All right, let's hear it again. Picture Best, Penny. We believe. Yeah. Mr. Est, we believe that the demon Azrael has chosen you as his earthbound instrument. This entity resides in you through no fault of your own and is responsible for the chaos that surrounds you and possibly many others. Dr. Corto and I have contacted the Vatican. <laughs> oh my God. Imagine fucking hearing that after your whole family disappears. <laughs> there has to be some part of you that's like, I knew it was going to be a demon. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is like, Nora is such a strong badass that like mm -hmm. she, it, it bounced right off of her. Like the bullets did on her bulletproof mm -hmm. vest. But what a beautiful analogy, Steven to me, I would have let it like really get to me probably and be like, yeah, me too. A hundred percent. God damn. Absolutely. It. So this is real. Demons are real. I have a demon in me. How the fuck am I going to get a demon out of me? And then I'm going to be There's like, no everyone way. needs to get away from me because that's, and Alana was even saying in the, um, in the Matt episode that, um, she, she was like, I just don't believe that someone has this bad luck. Like, I don't, I don't understand someone makes these types of decisions where this type of terrible shit keeps happening to them. I said, and, I don't get why he's being so stupid and naive. Right. And it, and it's weird how that insane phone call kind of tracks in things in Nora's life, mm -hmm. especially if with Matt being Nora's brother. Yeah. As I say, both of them, they're right. both, they're like the, the, the siblings in paranormal activity. Well, and then like, and then uh, Kevin like confesses to Nora that she starts she he started seeing Patty. Yeah, and Nora's like, like it's me. Yeah, so Nora's just like I'm a fucking lens. I'm destroying everything around me. Every the reason why the girl departed, the reason why all of this shit is happening is because of me. There's no way you don't have that phone call and then that night wake up in the middle of the night and just be absolutely petrified in the darkness of your own home. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. A scientist. A scientist yeah. called you and said, we believe you are being possessed by the demon Azrael. And by the way, I just pulled up really quick. Azrael is the angel of death. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think he's a demon. Is According he a demon? to Dis to Islam in in Islam and well, some he Jewish was traditions. the angel of death. Oh, Islam and Jewish, so he's not uh, Christian, but the Vatican is involved. So the it's Hebrew be name translates to angel of God, help from God. Azrael is the spelling of the Chambers Dictionary. What? What? Yeah, I like that you say. Um, like you keep referencing that it's a scientist for me it could be anybody yeah, if someone too. took this youtube video and put like a dark spot right here and then re-uploaded <laughs> it and was like Brett's house is fucking haunted i'd be like well no, i knew no, it no 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 you couldn't just be anybody and be like we think you've got a demon in you i'd be like goodbye you fucking crackpot but if it's like scientists that were like trying to come to my home with like some fucking PKE meter or Ghostbusters fucking reading shit, like reading the woman with that gun thing that he had, it's like there's some kind of science shit going on. And like science yeah. is, is it's it's hard not to trust science, right? So yeah, when a but, science, what if somebody cold but called science... you and was like, Steve, are you hey, sorry, is this Steve? Yes, this Steve is Steve. Zaragoza? Yes, this is Steve. Steve, we've been trying to find you. Okay, what's going you, on? Who is this? Do you remember? Yeah, I don't know. I have information Okay, about what if, that last time you were at that one place and got tested. Okay. We think there's a demon inside of you. <laughs> All right, fuck you. And then I'd hang out. <laughs> <laughs> but if they were like, hey, that scientist we sent to your house the other day that you got really angry at, we're sorry about that. Listen, we really want to talk to you about some kind of thing we're we're researching, and you. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like they could have. 
I don't think don't, it, you don't know how scientific yeah, they are. Like sci, but sci. You guys are acting like science is the hugest barrier to entry. Like science is any person can perform science. Like science is just studying yeah, something. But, and, but no, like, let me tell you, you could study whether it makes sense that people could walk on ceilings or not. And the conclusion will be, no, it doesn't because of gravity. But like you could study any of those things. So just because someone's a scientist and they're calling with their weird uh, hypothesis when they haven't actually studied you even, like they've come to your house, but they, well, he barely collected shit Listen, with that stuff. I'd have been like, eh. If there's somebody else. What's your study? What is your basis? Tell me the details and then I'll fucking freak out or not. If you're someone who has dedicated your life to learning about one specific thing and your day and night and your job is dedicated to studying exactly why You're this happened. You're presuming Wait, a on, lot. Why this just happened. Just because somebody's a doctor, saying, has a doctorate, well, no, no, no. does not I'm mean that saying, they are... I'm, I'm just saying I would trust that person over myself, first of all, hmm. and I would trust that person over like... I don't know, just some dude on the street that's like, hey, sure. I read an article. If this person was like, I'm a scientist, this is what I do for my job, here's my proof, here's my... Yeah, but they didn't say that. That's my point. They didn't say, here's my proof, here's, yeah, here's our study, here's guy, what we're doing in this but situation. But we saw the guy in a lab in the beginning of the we episode. We saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that, and and that guy came to, the, to her door with like electronic equipment and was asking about all this shit. And then the phone call later referenced that. So for me, it's like those people are legit. If they're working in a lab and shit and they've got money and they, they're they really focusing on Nora and it I'm not seems to... like something's up with Nora anyway, sure. I'm on board with this. I'm not trying to talk you out of it. I'm saying why I would not perceive it that way and don't perceive yeah, it yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah. We just are different. Yeah. That's all right. Um, Jamie just bust in here like we're not talking about some fucking ghost shit. <laughs> like, you know. Like that was going to be okay. That we weren't talking about paranormal activity like <laughs> 10 minutes ago. All right, next clip. Best test. That was it. We already heard it, Ezra. Well. That's a pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pie. <laughs> That's a pie. That's a great clip. I want to hear that in, in the future, please. You, you want to take a bird with you? <laughs> Fantastic. Let's hear it five times. Hey, thanks for coming to Chili's. Or thank you guys for coming to Chili's, and you guys have a great day. Oh, one last thing. You you want to take a bird with you? <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming to the zoo. Have a really nice day. Oh, one last thing. You you want to take a bird with you? <laughs> I didn't know we could take them. <laughs> Is that thank a you. new service? We wanted to thank you all for coming to our uh, the grand reopening of this park here in Los Angeles. And we really put a lot of effort and time, and the community really banded together to put this place together. We're really excited about the efforts. And so everybody, have a great time, all right? Oh, and one last thing. You, you want to take a bird with you? <laughs> I have another one. All right, go for it. You know, we've just been really annoying. Annoyed. They've been so loud in the trees. They got out. They've been multiplying. I just gotta ask. You you want to take a bird with you? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Is that just Listen, in LA? Listen real quick. Oh wait. It's it's we could definitely walk there, but it's <laughs> pretty far. You you want to take a bird with you? <laughs> <laughs> That was fantastic, Brett. Nice you work, win. Brett. Oh, All, right. All right. Here and we go. The final clip is this one we heard already. Right. Yeah. Miracle. <laughs> All right. You guys want to do some emails? Yeah, bitte. We might as well. We might as well. We're already yeah, here. We got all these snacks. <laughs> Look who's here. Fuck your daughter. Hey. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh, shit. Billy Ray. <laughs> Officer Mustard Stin. Time for some emails. Was that hard enough or do I need another or? All right, guys. Scott Bauer. <laughs> <laughs> Sends an email saying the leftovers damn, love it. an observation. Hey, DB and Valley cast fan, but new to the first time show, love the podcast show and clip. 
laughs. You you want to take a bird with you? <laughs> Thanks for the laughs. laughs. <laughs> Wait, <Thank you. laughs> Brett, which was your favorite clip from that episode? <laughs> I think it was the orb. But like, I, I gotta be honest. The bird works. I think the bird is The bird it. just works. It's a good week. It's a good week for clips. It's a great week for clips. What was your What was your favorite clip? I the or one. I just love it. Yeah, yeah. It's great. <laughs> I just it was love reminiscent it. of like some of the really great lost clips. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Although nothing's more lost than What's than. That? Uh, uh, this one. Oh, shit. We got a player here. <laughs> Dogs up for some golf? You got. <laughs> oh, man. Was that Hurley? Uh, there was a golf scene, but I don't that's know. If not that's not the one you pulled. Anywho, The Leftovers. My girlfriend and I have noticed that there is not a single episode yet where our police boy, Kevin, manages to stay dry and clean for a whole episode. <laughs> 100. Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk about Kevin telling Nora that he sees Patty. Well, I talked about it a little bit, but yeah, that's a huge moment, especially after that scene Nora had with uh, Regina King's character. It was maybe like the most, one of my favorite, most nuanced moments in the show because they did such a good job with the scene prior and that whole episode that when it got to that, I was even thinking like, Kevin, not right now. Yes, I know you totally. have shit going on. Totally, I just it's just one too many. Totally, absolutely, and uh, wasn't that scene with uh, Nora and Regina King uh, very reminiscent of um, Regina King and uh, Lori in the Watchmen show? Yes, yes, yeah. I was almost sad that that scene ended with them sort too. of at odds because I was had that I wanted to get excited again about. Regina King and a team up. I, I told Steve I really want Regina King and Nora Durst with her real name to come uh, over. Coon. To come over. I want I want um <laughs> Damon Lindelof over. to do something with the two of them <coughs> next. Um they're so damn good. Me too. If they could come over here, I'd totally ask them. You you want to take Before they leave. Bird with you? <laughs> Before they leave, they want to take a bird. Yeah. Anyway, um He's either uh, sweaty, muddy, or moist, etc. One greasy, slippery boy. Poor Nora. It also has led to a drinking game of saying jackpot every time he is grassy on, oh, greasy on screen and then drinking. A coping mechanism for not getting any answers to the abundance of questions throughout season two. Looking forward to the rest. Thanks again for the fun times, Scott. Thanks, Scott. We're getting close to the end, season, right? <clears throat> We're halfway through because it's 10 eps. Uh, Nathan Gagney mm. sends an email saying, I'm upset. <gasps> oh, this is about episodes three and four. Oh, oh Nathan. <laughs> uh, Long time listener, first time caller. To be honest, I don't have much to say about these past two episodes. Whoa, Nady boy. The stuff with Jill and Michael Murphy was the most interesting to me, and it felt like we were playing catch-up and not much actually happened. Yeah. However, since I watched season two, episode one and two, after the podcast episode was posted and couldn't get an email in, my burning resentment for something that happened in those episodes has been bottling up inside, and it's not okay. Is it cool if I lift this burden off my chest real quick? Does he this have is actually about one and two? Is it cool if I hold your hand? <laughs> I think it is about is one and two. He says he's seriously upset that Nora insisted on raising the bid for the house by hundreds of thousands of dollars for no reason during the auction. When it happened, really upset me. I uttered me no out loud, <laughs> had to pause the show to collect my thoughts and seriously entertain the bizarre thought of simply giving up on the show for how fiscally irresponsible this character was. Thank you, Brett, for being the voice of reason and bringing it up, albeit briefly during the podcast. I have lost- I feel like this person has has either is looking to purchase <laughs> or has looked to purchase a home and understands 
how difficult that whole process is. They could also have some money mindset issues, TBH, if it's still fiscally bothering them. He said, I have lost Ooh. all respect for Nora Durst. It's all I think of whenever she's on screen. Yikes. I mean, Whoa, I get it. Sounds I have... like you need to see a therapist. I have no, a terrible it's not, because I think about it a lot. Every time they're in that house, and that house looks like a pile of shit, I think about it. <laughs> really? Yeah, because it's not just about the money. It's also about, like, the did value. these three kids disappear? Because if they did, if they poofed, the value's going to fucking plummet. Someone <laughs> needs to, like, if you're ever in a position to ask Damon Lindelof any question ever about anything, someone needs to just straight up ask him why he made Nora so fiscally irresponsible on The Leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> you made me sneeze. I'm allergic to fiscal irresponsibility. <clears throat> Wow, so he Nathan has lost all respect for Nora. With no context, I mean, I that would it. be the best it. question he gets asked at Comic-Con. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Max is back, you guys. Max Street's Hi, Max. back. Welcome all back. right. He says, good morning, sweethearts. I am so excited to share this with you. You may recall back on the first episode of this Leftovers edition of the First Time Show, I shared an exclusive clip of Kevin Garvey being originally played by Sylvester Stallone. Uh I don't remember that. I remember. Now, after the show, I was picked, or sorry, now after the show was picked up for a second season, showrunner Damon Lindelof decided that since they had already paid Sylvester Stallone, Sly, they would use him for a new main character role because that is how acting contracts work. Yes, that is right. The role of reverse firefighter John Murphy was originally played by Sylvester Stallone. <clears throat> As luck would have it, I recently attended a fundraiser where I managed to sit behind the one and only Damon Lindelof. While he was busy filming said fundraiser, I managed to borrow an audio file from his unblocked briefcase <laughs> this clip was of John and his son Michael first arriving at the empty river and discovering that Evie was nowhere to be found. Please play the attached audio file. I cannot wait. All right, let's hear it. It's, it's an exclusive. I don't know. If, can we get in trouble for playing this? Yeah, I'm Whoa. sure. Take a bird with you. Dad, the water's gone. What the fuck? All the water. What is my family? Member. <laughs> Daughter. <laughs> Daughter. <sighs> the suspense is so good. Thank you, Max. He says, unfortunately, Sylvester had to be let go. Rumor has it that he would only address Regina King's character as Adrian and demanded a training montage every two episodes. Good night. I love you, Max. Good night, Max. Thank you. Beto. Good night, Max. Beto sends an email saying leftovers notes from episode 205, 206. Hello, Alonesty, Brett, and Bobby. 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 Here. I'm here, Bobby. We're here, Bobby. Bobby. Fret no more, Bobby. I went back and checked in the first episode of season two. They definitely show Michael going through the gate on the bridge to go outside when he goes to pray with Virgil. Maybe he oh. lives inside the park, but outside the gate. I don't know. Huh. Really? Notes for episodes 205. I understand. I cannot understand how a character can be this stupid. Stop on the side of the road to help someone? Fine. Ask John, the mob boss, what happened to him? Fine. But are you really going to trust the high as, as a kite junkie when he asks for your money? Nope. Oh, oh, wow, sound alert. Was that hard enough or do I need another or? Was that hard yeah. enough or do I need another or? 
I saw a few oh. parallels on this episode with religion. Mainly, I feel that Matt shows how believing in something so blindly and strongly without thinking can get you and others hurt. On the other side, John seems like the worst kind of atheist that will not allow others to believe in anything, even if violence is needed. Thoughts? Uh, I think Matt is is the least faithful person in the world, frankly, in my opinion. I think he wishes he was faithful and he wow. wants to just pretend he has faith. So he's always like, well, this should be the right thing to do, so I'll do it. Like so fucking <clears throat> blindly by what he was just taught is means you're a good person. Like do this, do that, or whatever. So he always tries to do those things thinking like, yeah, yeah, I'll believe something will happen. But he has zero belief, faith, trust in anything actually Beyond just, that, in I my that. in my observation of him, Matt just needs I to like live, laugh, and became... love. Wait, what? Matt <laughs> just needs to live, laugh, and love. I like that he became the de facto spiritual leader of Burning Man. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Two hundred six, Nora. We should support them. That's what neighbors do. Seen any good throwing rocks lately, girl? Get your throwing rocks, babies. Why did she throw the rock through her window? Because Nora threw a rock through her window earlier. Or do you mean why did Nora? Why did no, no, Nora why did do Nora? Yeah. It's questionable. <laughs> I can guess. I have no idea. She walked out there through it and through the window and then came and woke up Kevin. Yeah, what was the interaction they had before that? Hard to tell. Nora's reaction when the scientist on the phone starts talking about the demon Azrael is the exact same way I would react. I would have loved it if Regina King, if after Regina King's angry speech, the goat guy would just go outside and bring <laughs> in another goat and be like, this here, my spare goat. A spare oh, I thought goat. he meant, I thought he was going to say, I wish at the end of the back and forth between Regina King and Nora if the guy just buzzed into Regina King's house with a goat. <laughs> That's what I thought, too. And just drops the, the plastic. No, Jerry, no. Not now. Jerry! 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 No. What are we Fucking thinking? Jerry, dude. What are we thinking? Is Virgil John or Erica's dad? I'm leaning Erica's, John. but John trying to kill him either way is very interesting. Yeah, I think it's John. I think he's John's dad too. I thought he was John's, definitely John. But after that he exchange, would've, he would have shot him because he was being spiritual and whatever. In John's right. eyes, benefiting from miracle, right? Um, Beto says, "I really tried finding details that people might miss, but I was entranced with these two episodes. Sorry, I couldn't bring it this week. It's been a long one. Spank me with an oar and call me Brian, Don <laughs> Beto." Brian, <laughs> was that hard enough or do I need another or Charlie breadstick says leftovers is a bunch of bullshit, bro. What the fuck is Kevin thinking, dude? What the fuck? He just told Nora he's seeing someone. What the fuck? What a horrible way to say dude is hearing shit. Now Nora's going to think that Kevin is fucking the voice in his head. Anyway, guys, love you. <laughs> I liked the earlier oh. scene where he was. Clearly talking to Patty, yeah. but we didn't see Patty. Yeah. But he was just like his dad. I love seeing him from Nora's perspective like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Anthony Leg Shit sends us Whoa. an email saying, How's it going, babes, boys, and bungos? It's your favorite listener, Bobby Dick Lips. Just, Bobby! Just got Richard Dunn catching up on this popcast, and let me wet my whistle for just a beat but I respected the format the whole damn time. Matt's episode was banging. I was popping out boners left and right and sideways. Baby doll, hell yeah, hoo-wee. Nora cheated on Kevin with Dan from Dan's Thoughts. Love your love your good buddy, Jenjamin Grubich. Wow, masterpiece of an email. Frame it. <laughs> Miracle. Does he, not, does he not get a bird, Miracle. Steve? Oh, yeah, have a bird. You want to take a bird with you? Olivia Retchu says, a little time capsule and a story for Brett. <gasps> Hello, Steve so Alana and Brett, 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 Brett. My name is Olive, and I'm a long-time listener, second-time emailer, and I wanted to send this little email because I'm way behind on leftovers. I originally started the first episode of the podcast and planned on listening along without watching 
But then Steve said the words, Christopher Eccleston's character, and I stopped everything I was doing to go watch a new show starring one of my favorite doctors. Now here I am, almost caught up on season one and trucking along, hoping I can catch up to you guys before you start season three. Man, if he's your favorite doctor, get ready for this episode with him in it. Because you get to see... uh, (laughs) My favorite doctor. That's the name of the episode. Steve, I wanted to know if the Valley Folk P.O. Box was open for first-time show stuff. I ran a, I run a small business selling hand-painted wooden signs and would love to make one for the first-time show. I know I won't get to hear this response for a while, but I would love to send you guys something. That's very sweet. Yeah, if you want to send something sweet. to the Valley Folk P.O. Box, please do. I don't have the P.O. Box number off the top of my head, uh, I can pull it up before the episode's over, but um, if you do send something to the, the first time show specifically, make sure you put um, first time show care of the Valley Folk. All right? Or is it Valley Folk care of first time no, show? No, it would be first time show care of Valley Folk. Yeah. First yeah. time show yeah, care yeah. of Valley Folk. Yeah. Um, I loved Christopher Eccleston's season, but Matt Smith is my favorite doctor. Should I know who Matt Smith is? Matt Smith I, is great. This, but... this isn't for you. This is for the okay. email. I think, um, yeah, I really like, uh, who was it between Eccleston and Matt Smith? Tenet. David Tenet. Tenet. David Tenet. He was my favorite. Oh, I think. Doctor. Yeah. Right. Um, I thought Matt Smith got the best episode. Matt Smith is great. He's very, very What about good. that Grigory Parnovich? Yeah, I'm right. Um, great. I'm sure this uh, email is already Mm -hmm. bordering on long, but I had a quick story that I think Brett especially would get a kick out of. Back around Easter, my mother was telling me how she had gotten two different types of candies for my brother and I for our Easter baskets. Is it okay if I... Spoiler. Is it okay if I give the M&Ms to Joe? Which ones do you want? She said to me without looking up from my phone. I said, I don't care. Candy is candy. I had an instant war flashback of the long debate about whether... Candy is candy is an actual phrase. Well, I guess you could call me Rose's husband Bernard because in my opinion, candy is candy. Thank you guys for all the laughs you provide me. Whenever I feel the need to rewatch Lost, I just listen to the first time show again. Even but is though this art imitating or is this life imitating art? Yes. Imitating? I think it is. Life imitating the answer art is imitating yes life. To all of it. Yes. Um, can't wait to hear what show Brett has in mind for that apparently lines up with the timeline. Good night, Olive. P.S. Brett, any chance you still remember the Lost trivia from episode eight? Oh, God. Um, oh, remember? You were supposed to remember that. But I, it got called out when it was supposed to, and yeah. I remembered it then. Yeah. Sure. I, don't, sure. I definitely sure. don't remember it now. But I'll try before the was end of the episode. Was it something about Scott and Steve? No, it was something about like walking or yeah. somebody. All right, well. Like an actor. Hashtag Brett, yes. Hashtag Alana, heck yes. Hashtag oh, Steve, all right. Hashtag Razzle Dazzle. <laughs> if you remember, email. Email in. And let, Dude, remind us. candy is candy. Because Bernard candy. says it to Rose in candy Lost. Candy is candy. He says, candy is candy. And we just went off on it on the podcast. Like, who the fuck says that? Candy is candy. No, candy is as candy. candy does. It's not. It was candy. awesome. This, you know... These are the kind of these are the kind of uh, moments that we live topics for. we cover on this <laughs> on this podcast. Yeah, Maggie Faff sends an email saying "Bird Box," more like "Turd Box." Hello, everyone. My name is Maggie <laughs> Faff. <laughs> oh, you Brett take almost a bird with you. <laughs> <laughs> Brett almost spit the computer up. <laughs> it's the simplest jokes that get me. I know. Same. I love it. My name is Maggie Faff, pronounced like Paff. The first F is silent. All right, Faff. And I'm totally loving this show and exploring it with you guys. My mom passed away very suddenly during this pandemic, and this really gives me something to look forward to, so thanks. All right, I'll say your name right then. First of all, my condolences. I'm very sorry. Maggie Paff. Anyway, here are some thoughts she says. You you want to take a bird with you? No room at the inn. That webcam really creeped me out. What if he saw a ghost or a boy gentleman on it or something? A boy gentleman? <laughs> it's a dynamic banter. 
reference. Oh, boy, boy gentleman. gentleman. <laughs> boy gentleman was like a drink or like a bar or something. I can't remember. We discussed you and I at some point about a a boy gentleman sick multicam sitcom. <laughs> no way. Do we have notes on that somewhere? That's great. <laughs> That's lost. That's right there with the trivia. That's the like, trivia. remember that one show idea we came up with about the guy that like, oh, 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 it was like Desmond. Jamie, we're talking too much about ghosts right now <laughs> for you to be busting in like this. It's inappropriate. It's very scary. You scare Brett every time you do oh, that. Stop. Please stop. This is too much. My heart, my heart can't take it that, anymore. That um, okay, we're in emails. I'm almost done. You you want to take a bird with you? Okay. Wow. Yeah, kiss her more, oh, kiss her more, kiss her more, kiss her more, kiss her more. Kiss her more. Oh, he turned the oh. camera. Oh. But the mic's still on. We don't get to perv out about it, I guess. Back door, my friend. <laughs> Back door, my friend. Back door, my friend. Back door, my friend. <laughs> Jamie has drank all the tequila in my parents' house. <laughs> Jackpot. Oh, shit. We got a player here. Another great, <laughs> great response. All right. John clearly has too much power in this town. Yeah. And I, for one, am very concerned. For some reason, all the scenes in the camping area remind me of Midsummer, and that really stresses me out. Or Midsummer. Was it just called Midsummer? Yeah, Midsummer. Mid mid <clears throat> and then here's some thoughts on Lens. So they sent Tommy Wiseau to research the disappearance of the girls. <laughs> That's so good. That is so good. Dude, Regina King is so good. Yes. Yeah, indeed. Jerry really needs to learn how to read a room. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, stop! Jerry! Jerry! Lots of love, Maggie from Pittsburgh. Maggie. We love you, Maggie. We love you. We hope you're well. Please laugh. Have a good laugh, will you? Please do laughing, please. Israel. Maggie, thank you for the great laugh from you for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was quite you for us. Hopefully it also went back to you again as well. And back to you in the studio. Israel Chavez <laughs> Lopez sends an email saying, everything makes sense. Hello, boys and girl. Ecuadorian boy Israel here. I got a little hypothesis for you that tr uh, tries to tie together different aspects of the show. We know there's a guy in Australia that claims that he came back to life and now he can't die. Mozzie Bites, my, a.k.a. David Burton. Apparently, he is the real deal because Kevin's dad is going to visit him due to the voices telling him to do it. Erica told us that the bird she buried was alive three days later. Virgil has something to do with these birds. He has a lot of them in his house. You, you want to take a bird with you? We also know that John shot Virgil and survived, and now apparently he has some special power. Wait, Virgil survived? I don't remember that part. Just Well, because she said, yeah, right? He said he tried to kill him or something, or he tried to kill him once mm. or something. He definitely shot him. What's the other thing? He's got a pie. And uh, well, he has that special power because remember he said, "I'm sorry for your loss" or whatever. Oh mm -hmm. fuck, I forgot. But then that other guy ah. in the um... <laughs> there it is. There it is. That's a pie. Uh, what were you, you saying? You can Brad? hear the birds. First episode, there was the guy who told Matt that if he didn't get his wife back inside the city, that the baby would die. Oh yeah, so that that's right. Video. Wait, wait. That's oh, right. in the first episode we just watched. Yeah. I thought you meant like beginning of the season. Yeah, no, I was like no. some tricky oh. shit. But um, Virgil said to Nora in the convenience store, I'm sorry for your loss, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. Which conceivably yeah. means he might have some sort of magic. Who knows? We got a lot of Jardine well, it magic. Seems like magic and miracle. Ooh, mm -hmm. I like that. That's my favorite Disney parade. Uh, Virgil in the Divine Comedy is one of the guides in hell and also the representation of reason. Oh, that's interesting. Wait. Oh. Yeah. That's really cool. Nice work, Israel. Truly. I, th I think that when people die in specific circumstances, they go to the other side and come back with the knowledge of everything that is happening on the show. This is why Kevin is trying Does to kill- Does he mean in real life? Like when people show. die in in our real lives, they come back with <laughs> knowledge of, of the right, actual leftovers. 
This is this wow. is why Kevin is trying to kill himself when he sleepwalks. So I think Virgil is going to guide Kevin through this process. Those are my thoughts, guys. Mm. I hope it's not too long of an email, Israel. Hashtag wear a goddamn mask. Uh, come on, it's not that hard. Jackpot. Wait, I, I don't understand his conclusion. He thinks, Vir but Virgil's not dead. Well, he, he thinks, thinks that because Virgil died, well, we're assuming and came back. He now he got has some shot, kind he, of power or something. But did he actually die? I thought he just got shot. We don't I actually don't know. know if he died. I, I thought someone said, oh, or do we? he tried to kill him or something? I don't know. Okay, well, we'll just stop there then. Um, <laughs> Wayson, shit, I forgot how to say his name. Oisin. Is it Oisin? Yes. Oisin Clancy yeah. sends an email saying, Leftovers email theme! <gasps> hey, ladies and babies, since you guys asked, I'm extremely Irish. Oh! My name is pretty Can common. you say it again with a Scottish, I mean an Irish Irish accent. one? Oisin! Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, la la, and down Killarney. Oisin! Oisin! Yeah, I don't know. And I'm not good at Irish. It's like Searsha. Searsha is maybe the hardest. Searsha. Read it versus pronounce it. Aye. The lost's name was Searsha. Since you guys asked, I'm extremely Irish. Okay. Also, I made you guys an email Irish. theme based on an Irish traditional music. Ooh, yes. I hope you like it. All right. Well, here we go. Is you it a ready? rat or a mouse? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, who this thing? <laughs> Emails. This is great. Wow. Oh, my. So many deep cuts in there. Those were basically lost clips with that hell yeah, Hoobastank. Did we talk about hell yeah, Hoobastank on here? What is that from? It, there was an that? old vine, and the guy just goes, you can hear that song? I'm not a perfect person. Like, you can hear it. And they, but, what's that? They, isn't that on an album? Isn't that, doesn't that precede a song? Hell yeah, Hoobastank? Yeah. I don't know. I just know that there's a vine of a guy listening to that song, and he just looks at the camera and goes, hell yeah, Hoobastank. And that's the I whole. I feel like, like Reggie in full effect or somebody. Oh, interesting. I didn't know. Stay tuned. I will. I will. Do, I'll do a little googling. Great. Joseph O'Malley sends an email saying, "Hey guys, thought I'd start with a clarification. The house that the Garveys were supposed to rent, which burnt down, was almost certainly the handprint fortune tellers, as he says in the in episode one, that he's renting out the upstairs." You might remember that John says to install a separate entrance for it to be up to code. That's right. right. But I thought they weren't going to do just an upstairs. That's why it was unclear to me. Well, but they yeah, did they say could be a right. rental. Yeah. Episode five. Matt episodes are like the perfect tragic comedies to me. And I think this one manages to surpass the first. Do you still believe that Matt is lying about Mary after this episode? I personally don't want to believe that Matt could rape Mary because even if I disagree with a lot of his actions last season, he always seemed like a very moral character. But obviously in this episode, we start to see him break down a little. So it's certainly not impossible, impossible wait, wait, wait. that he did something so terrible out of desperation. In this episode, we start to see him break down. What happened when he beat up that guy for his gambling money and shit? Well, he, he has broken defense. Regard no, the guy already finished beating him up, and then he went af actively after him. I'm not saying that it was a bad thing to do. Well, I'm he had to saying, get his money back. Though. I'm saying we have seen him have breaks, mental breaks, hey. many times. It's not just suddenly that we're having that happen. Yeah, but the ghost is back. The, the ghost, ghost is back. back. The, the ghost, ghost is back. back. The ghost is back. Guys, I didn't tell the ghost to go. Away. <laughs> I didn't find the answers I needed in oh, my Google. Oh, Steve, I found one of your pubes in the mic. Well, you better hang on to it. It's good luck. Uh, Matt, can you eat it? Matt Gross. asks John. This is a 90s rom-com. I don't asks, want it. I, just the way you were <laughs> handing it to me, I thought you wanted me to eat it, and I'm not going to eat it. I'm going to put it on a pizza, boy, Listen, and plenty, you're going to hey, scarf it down. Guys, stop fighting. There's plenty to go around. <laughs> oh, Matt asks John what made him so angry. What do you guys think might have done it 
could it be something to do with Virgil since Erica reveals next episode that there's a lot of tension between them? I have a theory. And that he was the target of John's attempted <clears throat> murder? What's your theory, Alan? My Well, my theory is a little more vague than that. I said, the re- I think the reason he doesn't like magic shit is that he he's perceiving that Miracle has at least in other people's perceptions helped them out. Like there have been miracle things happening in Jardin and they have not helped him. His life has been the opposite of helped by being there. And so I think he's just a well, like Matt fracking kinda, angry dude about it. Didn't Matt say that straight up to him? Though? No, I said that when we were watching that scene. Well, but Matt says that to him. Matt basically. says what happened to you? Well then, yeah, but then he says, I think what happened is, is nothing is like nothing special happened to you. And you're like upset about it. Oh, well, I don't remember him saying that. I thought I just said that. <laughs> Somebody write well, in and please I don't clarify. Know who said it, but I love it. He said something Emily, you smell like alcohol. What's that? He says something to Matt about, like, why would your wife be special or right. whatever? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. I think we don't uh, have enough information yet. Well, he does say, like, my wife didn't get her ear, her hearing fixed or whatever. Right. Sure. Lens brings some much needed forward momentum. As much as I love season two, the first half definitely doesn't progress the main narrative often enough as many episodes overlap exactly. in terms of the timeline, which can make it seem slow. Exactly. But thankfully, that's less of an issue from now on. This episode is great as we get answers to a lot of little mysteries, like the bird box and the townspeople's rituals. And also another possible theory for the departure in the lens theory, which is absolutely bonkers. The demon Azrael? Love it. What are your prevailing theories? Was it geography-based, lens theory, something else, or even some combination of these? Also, the episode's just brilliant from a writing and acting standpoint. In terms of drama and tension, the Nora and Erica scene is unmatched. If Agreed. you haven't seen Watchmen, you gotta see it. <laughs> Can't wait for the next week, where I assume you'll hopefully be joined by Owen. Buckle up! Things are about to get crazy! I'm so excited. Buckle I'm really up. excited. I'm so excited. I almost want to like just go like, let's just record it on Monday or something. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. I mean, we could just have people I get on Monday, hands. but yeah, I get where you're at. But, but if we do do it a little earlier Doo-doo. this week, we'll let you guys know to watch the episode and um, when to get your emails in. And realistically, we oh, probably yeah. won't. We'll probably do the usual. We'll do it whenever Owen's lungs are available. <laughs> um, John sends an email. Episodes about episodes five and six saying, what's up, gang? Hope you're all doing great. Quick thoughts on this week's episodes. First of all, Matt centric episodes are always a bit tough to sit through. Thank you. Thank you, John. Because so much of it revolves around him getting the shit kicked out of him physically, mentally and emotionally. But that also means exceptional acting by Christopher Eccleston. He's so good. He is. He's so natural and yeah. Amazing. It also gives the writers a chance to explore the themes of faith and religion overtly, which I personally always find interesting. Also, holy crap, Nora versus Erica is one of the best moments. Oh my God. Oh my God. Holy Brad's shit. Gonna that shit terrified me. me as well. <laughs> Go, the ghost is back. Tuned, the, ghost right is back. back. <laughs> the ghost is back. The All ghost right. is back. I love Brad, though. Brad's a good boy. That was Brett's brother for a second there. Just a second there. Uh, it was terrifying, though, because it wasn't uh I think Brett's Jamie. door in his room is a portal. I was going to say it was a poor choice of putting the camera in front of that mm. for him being in behind it. Poor choice for his you know fear. I mean. Anyway, um, also, uh, Nora versus Erica, blah, 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 is the best mo- one of the best moments in the series for me. Beautiful acting by Carrie Coon and Regina King. Big, big ups. Loving the way it was shot. Those great close-ups during the scene made it very intense to watch. Great acting and great directing. I must say, though, that after the intense Nora slash Erica conversation, Kevin's confession to Nora felt a little bit like a bit of, little bit of an afterthought and a bit rushed to me. Great acting from Justin Thoreau, though. Love revisiting the show with you guys. Keep it up. Take care. John. I considered yeah. turning the camera back on with Jamie sitting there. <laughs> I don't want to freak anybody out. All right, final email, you guys. 
he says he accepts our job offer. Do we offer him a job? Who Z- is it? Zeeshan mm. says, hey, girl and boys, I'm writing to let you know that I enthusiastically accept your job offer as personal assistant. I'm available 24-7 and will attend to any first-time show-related tasks like pulling clips. I only ask for my email to be read every episode as compensation. My resume is attached if you want a better look at my qualifications. By the way, reusing someone's acceptance of a job offer because you forgot is known in many cultures as a dick move, so keep that in mind. (laughs) What? Wait, read that last sentence again. He said, by the way, refusing someone's acceptance of a job offer because you forgot is known in many cultures as a dick move, so keep that in mind. uh... I was going to say, I think this is from a long time ago. Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah. I think this was like Deering Lost. No way. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm misremembering, but it feels like it was a long time ago. We were like, if someone could just come work for us and pull clips and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. This is your job interview. So now we have an employee. Uh, <laughs> season two, episode Don't five. Blow it. He says, not doctor was right when he said Mary could not consent. So here's hoping that Matt is telling the truth. Her being pregnant was a good twist, though. I think she's going to wake up when it's time to give birth. Or would that be too predictable and sappy? Her having a miscarriage way may go too much into season one depressing. Yeah. I think a C-sectioning, a comatose Mary would be a nice middle ground. Hmm. Definitely, that- if she miscarries... That naked lady walking with high heels over those guys. Definitely want to try that out because it got me sexually curious if you catch my drift. <laughs> cool. Wait, we saw that shot and Steve was like, that's Brie. I was like, that would be Brie's job in that. <laughs> in that Burning <laughs> that Man <universe>. zone. <laughs> and she would be the fucking best one. Ever. Absolutely. I, know, I loved it. I was like, you should send her a clip. <laughs> Justin Thoreau is getting hotter by the episode. I'd get whacked in the head with a wrench and forced to wheel my comatose wife to town only to get incarcerated just so I could go get a hug from him. Wow. I don't want your Magic wristband. Hugs. That's Magic not fucking hugs. hugs. John's wristband. It's Matt's. Why did he say that? That was really weird. The guy who stole their wristbands dying was a miracle for all intensive purposes. Wait, wait, wait. Read that sentence again? I don't want your wristband. That's not John's wristband. It's Matt's. Why did he say that? That was really... He meant like your town yeah. wristband. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because he's the, the town Here's guy the unofficial. Can we talk about the wristbands for a second? Sure. There's no fucking qr code that they can scan in and see their face and be like i know oh, yeah, you stole this wristband well, this, and now you're under arrest this was before qr codes wow so that's the answer then <laughs> um also excuse me sir if you're going to be working for us zishan you should know that that phrase all intents and purposes is not all intensive purposes oh get called right out and it's certainly not intensive porpoises. It is intents and purposes. Let's go ahead and read that Grammarly ad. Uh, <laughs> you can download Grammarly. It's a free extension for Chrome. And uh, it'll fix these problems for you. Got to say, Eccleston has a nice dick. Why were you using a toilet to pee, man? Show that shit off at the urinal. Why were you oh. using a toilet to pee? That man? is the third sexual sexual experience relation in this email. That's quite a many. Yeah. Now I'm uncomfortable. The song at the <laughs> end is the cringiest shit ever. The Regina Spector song? Or was there yeah, another one? That's what one? he's saying. Yeah. Was it Regina Spector? Regina Spector did the. It seemed a little Jesus-y. out of place in this show. The like God, God's laughing with you is the last line. It's like God doesn't laugh at church or God doesn't. Go to church? Oh, something like that. God doesn't yeah, go yeah. to church. <laughs> Season two, episode six. Cue up clip number one. Yep, guy, yep, 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 yep. Guy with the goat again. Noticed him in the last episode too. Man, I'm so enamored with Carrie Coon whenever she's on screen. She's so awesome and has such a commanding presence. Yeah, it's so true. Where the shit is she? Would you like to visit Matt today? Imagine if Nora saw Matt on the pillory. <laughs> yeah, like completely naked up there. Man, Erica sure is dismissing George with a lot of brevity. Wait, I thought she did, but we just don't see it, didn't she? Because she said, 
she said that she had visited him with Mary before, and that was supposed to be only the very next day. I don't know. So that would she would have seen him up there, wouldn't she? All right, Erica now, play clip number one. Oh, there's a clip number one. Got it, got it, got it. He sent a clip in the email here. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Got it, got it. Oh, I thought you were purposely it, it, it. not playing them. I didn't know what he was talking about here. What's this clip? Let's find your bird. Oh, great, 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 great. Okay, I see, I see. That's a lost clip. <laughs> he said, all right, Erica. Oh, that I get it now. All right, Erica, now. Let's find your bird. There you go. All right. I don't know what that digital sound was. The most obvious answer for what Lori did was that she exposed Tommy for being a fraud. No. That's probably not it because she's the one who made the suggestion to do it. Maybe she refused to get hugged. No, I think Tom can we flashback episode? Can we do theories on this cuz I yeah. have a theory sure. straight up. Sure. My theory is that Tommy started believing it believing that he was like a magic hugs guy and mm -hmm. just started like doing the shit that oh, Wayne did. He like he just went control. off and was like, yeah, I'm going to go do what I'm called to do is what I got to do. Give me the hug. Oh, he started to believe it. He be yeah. started mm. believing it full stop and like went out to do it. Hmm. I mean, it do you think he's looking for his dad? <gasps> no. Maybe I think he wants he to already... hug his, no, real, his dad. real dad. Yeah, I think he already handled that. He know he saw okay. the real dad and it was no, a I'm weird saying experience. Maybe he wants to hug his real dad. Yeah, I'm hearing you and I think he's already done that the equivalent of that, you know? He's already been there, interacted with him, and... Mm. Kevin telling Nora... Oh, wait, 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 sorry. Uh, he said, uh, the fundraiser is way too real in how awkward and painful it is to sit through one. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Fortunately, it ended with a fantastic scene. We got answers as to what's up with the goat guy and the bride woman in a really natural way. Goat guy and bride woman. The scene where Erica and Nora was fucking amazing. Brand new Marvel comic. <laughs> who outacted who, in your opinion? Carrie Coon for me. I think they both did great. Kevin telling Nora was unexpected. What did he do, though? I think he found out what happened to the girls and that he is responsible. I stand by my prediction that the girls did not depart. The premise of this show about this one earth-shattering event and people's reaction to it. It'll be cheap if there was another one and the premise would be ruined. Oh, ruined? Right now with Erica and Nora, it's all about the potential. What if they caused it? Thinking about the what is so interesting that I think we may never find out what happened to them. Yeah. You know, I wonder if Erica's ever going to leave Johnny Boy. Yeah, that was really interesting. Because I'm ready for it. I don't like... Yeah, he's him. not a good boy. But I can see how it'd be really hard to leave somebody who's unofficially the king of the town. You know, like everyone's in his yeah. pocket. A hundred, yeah, a hundred percent. And you that's, got kids with him. That's going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. And he's violent as shit to people who like don't do what he likes. Oh, what do you guys? Well, I think she wanted to make sure that her daughter was okay because she's planning to leave. Yeah. Like in the night, go be zero, gone, and never come back. Yeah. I, I think you have to do that with a guy like that because I think there would be an actual mm -hmm. fear of true violence. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Do you think that Angela or Angela, geez, <laughs> Erica, do you think Erica might have wished for her for something to happen to her daughter? And that's what happened to her because of the bird. I think wish? she was honest to uh, Nora. But do you think I'm not asking that I'm asking, do you think the daughter's disappearance is related to that? No. And Angela, I'm saying it again too. Erica, Erica. said to her that her wish was that Evie would be okay when, without without her. her. I yeah. think that, that she was being honest. I think that's exactly what she wished. But do you think that wish is real? Is what I'm asking. What do you mean? Do real? you think it really affected? do you affected? think that it will come true because she told Nora, which you cannot do with wishes? Oh, <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Brett? <laughs> Macaroni salad. No, do you salad? think that, er that Erica caused her daughter to dis disappear? I don't know. I like speculating. Okay. Brett? Let's say Yes. Okay, end of this email says, see you next week. P.S. Just want to give a shout out to Alana's puns. I know Brett and Steve ignore them, but I oh, notice them, Alana. And you. I find them funny a good 10% of the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I never ignore a good pun. All right, oh, well, thank you okay. for the emails. No, no, I, I don't even know. Are you making puns over here? I'm making statements I, and jokes. I don't jokies. think I've ever heard you make a pun. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, do you make puns? I think he just means the jokies I'm making. I, uh, I feel like probably a good few of them could be considered puns, but I don't know about all of them. 
Huh. Okay. I like a good pun, though. Indeed. Um, all right. Well, thank you for your emails. And if you guys want to send in your emails uh, in the future for future episodes, go to futureepisodes.com slash welcome to the birds. You could do that. But if you wanted to do things the right way, you could email us at the first time show at gmail.com. Get those emails in by as early as Saturday mornings because we record these on Saturdays. Pacific at some point. time. Pacific Standard US time. Pacific time. Saturday PST. Morning. Anyway, uh, anything else you guys want to add? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, are you buckled in for what's coming? Alana? I'm ready, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get on this next episode soon, I think. Oh really? Okay. I watched both episodes today and I like spacing them out a little bit. Um, well, let's get on Owen's case together okay. a little bit and uh, see if we can convince him to come on the show for the next episode. Um, and, and you know, it yeah. would be a good balance to be like, maybe Owen comes in when we talk about the, like one of the episodes or should he watch both of them and be on, bo- on the I thought you were going to say it was going to be a good balance to have four squares. <laughs> Yeah, that will be too, actually. I think it's up to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, anyway, guys, thanks for listening to the show. Please, if you're listening to this podcast and you don't know, there is a video version of the show, and it's on YouTube.com slash The Valley Cast. You and can see Brett's ghosts. You can see Brett's ghosts. You can yeah. see Alana's pretty makeup and oh, hair. Oh, I did. Thank you. And you can see my dumb headband I wear all the time. And, and before uh, you leave, you can pick out your bird. <laughs> That's true. You can pick out your bird before you leave. But uh, please subscribe to the Valley Cast channel. That's where you'll see video versions of this show, as well as the Valley Cast and Ellie Morgan's podcast, The Fundamentalists. And I think that's it. Cool. Thank you All for right. listening. We appreciate it. Love you. Also, we love you. Oh, before we go, there is the option. You, you want to take a bird with you? 